Today in FIDE Grand Prix tournament, we had tie breaks between several players. And I think the most spectacular game was the game between Wesley So and Linear Dominguez. And this game is spectacular, not just because it's very aggressive, because it has lots of, um, by both players, it's aggressive by both players, first of all. It's not just uh, the one that who win is playing aggressive, but both sides play quite aggressive. And it has lots of nasty tactics um, hidden in the game that I like to show you those hidden parts. And it is an Italian game, my favorite but with the team of Roy Lopez and I mean I love Italian I also play a lot of Roy Lopez so I can enjoy talking about this game yeah no, also I have a, a scotch uh, I have a video series on scotch gambits if you can watch it it's not exactly it's scotch gambit is a subline of Italian game you can watch them and it's very similar to this line actually so many ideas are similar actually so let's go forward and i fast forward opening moves because they are they include lots of theory behind them and i cannot uh, in short video in like 10 minutes tell you what's the idea behind every single of them even if i know i mean some of them i don't know some of them i know and those i know i cannot tell them all of them so uh, we t uh, the position transpose a little bit to the Roy Lopez style instead of Italian style, and we see this knight maneuver of Lo Roy Lopez by both sides here, and uh, black knight jumps into f4, white knight wants to go to f5, and this is what we see here in this game as well, and this is completely right now completely looks like Roy Lopez actually. So if uh, I if I give you this position, if I uh, you give this position to someone, says that it is from Roy Lopez, not barely they say this is from Italian game. Okay. Anyways, we arrive to the position that we discussed. They would like to place their knight in the camp of the opponents, one on f five, the other on f four, and both of them can capture the knight of the opponents with the with their bishops, but. At least black bishop is doing something important there. First of all, at some point, white pushed h3 pawn. And this h3 is a weakness in white's camp because at some point, black can sacrifice a bishop if... Uh, imagine this knight is not there. Imagine it moved before. The knight is not there. Uh, black can sacrifice a bishop on h3. And... Oh, sorry. Let me go forward to be able to move this bishop. Bishop goes to take h3, and after that, queen recaptures, and then queen can jump into the g2. First goes to h3, and then g2 and is a checkmate. So, this is a common checkmating idea that you have. This is why you put your knight on f4. It's not there just to watch the air and to enjoy it there but it's there to do something and it's to do the mate similarly white has plans uh, and puts the knight there has some plans even though black didn't push h6 and we don't see similar weakness but the plan of white in this case is mostly to give up a knight for a bishop and uh, later Bring this pawn forward. I go back to be able to move this. Bring this pawn forward in the camp of the white uh, black. This pawn can go destroy the pawn structure of black. Or um, with help of the other pawns, for example, G pawn and H pawn can I start to march towards the black king. So this is the idea behind this move. So let's go forward. And of course, this uh, f6 moves usually do, you don't play it, but uh, this time bishop is controlling the diagonal, so it's not a problem. And white also doesn't want to give up the bishop for a knight for two reasons. Uh, a move before white played bishop e3. The reason is that uh, didn't take the knight. The reason is that if it takes, then the other knight takes. 
that's it first second reason is that the bishop of black this bishop is watching and uh, eyeing this diagonal and can be source of any tactic you should can counter this bishop so this is why white played bishop e3 and here white captures opens the diagonal towards the bishop of the black and black recaptures knight goes in and then uh, what is the knight doing there knight wants to give up himself uh, for a pawn on h7 or win the bishop on e6 depending on the position so um, black pushes forward and maybe okay okay something i want to tell you here is that why white didn't take this free pawn is defended queen is defended with the knight yeah why because simply black captures this knight and another thing i want to say okay why why didn't take this pawn this you should know here in this case black sacrifices the bishop once you take back takes with the queen and have a good day checkmate is in the corner so let's go back to the game and these are common tactics that you should be aware of you know uh, you may train tactics and puzzles in whatever website you would like but every opening has its own tactical uh, structures that you should be aware of those tactical structures when you play it for example when you play against italian uh, by playing e4 you should be familiar with such tactics and in particular when you play italian yourself or you when you play roy lopez yourself you should be familiar with tactics that we will see in future in a few moves later and they are very important okay attacks the no so taking the d pawn is impossible so attacks the bishop and pushes forward and then captures the bishop you couldn't uh, save that bishop retreating the bishop wasn't bringing you anything uh, especially in this time if uh, for example if you retreat the bishop then and the grabbing the d pawn is very good actually because there is no there is no bishop to capture the knight so you simply lose the bishop therefore you cannot save the bishop and opens the center opens the center you take take and gets rid of that that diagonal bishop that bishop on a7 is very dangerous first time that you can get rid of it do it if you have a white and if you have a black it's better to not give it up but you cannot waste a lot of time to not giving up a bishop so don't worry too much if uh, your white takes your bishop but if it doesn't take it's beneficial for you because for example at some point for example this knight can land on this square for example i mean just uh, g3 and because the f pawn is pinned and if imagine black's bishop is uh, on this diagonal then f pawn is pinned and at some point this could be very nasty having knight on g6 so in the g3 sorry and it's not just knight queen also can go any piece can go to g3 and uh, can be source of any trouble captures captures brings the queen in so far all good nothing is bad um, for black or white everything is fine but here at this point uh, and around this point Wesley makes huge mistake i think he did miscalculate something and it's not obvious it's not a blunder i mean engine evaluation changed quite a lot by two three points but it's not something that you have anything immediate right now uh, but it's a big big mistake and let me tell you why it's a big mistake because in all these roy lopez lines okay uh, you want to open your bishop diagonal to attack to h7 
your bishop is here or on b3 in the, usually in one of these two squares and you always want to open these diagonals and both diagonals are open um, basically because this pawn can simply grab the d pawn and then open the diagonal also you cannot for example be like oh sorry uh, even the next move even at this moment, for example, Bella cannot push this pawn to close the diagonal because white simply captures the pawn and opens the diagonal. So what's the what's bad about this diagonal being open? Is the bad part is that queen and bishop battery is too strong. Imagine queen is here attacking to h7 square. Queen is on e4 attacking to h7 square with help of his bishop. You cannot do anything. You may say that currently you have a knight there and defends everything. Yeah, you have a knight there, but uh, but even Wesley uh, couldn't calculate all details. But for example, I just want to say one stupid looking line. As at some point, this knight can give up itself to kick out the G6 knight. So the similar thing happens in the game actually. Uh, black tries to occupy the file and uh, strange enough and it, this is amazing this is a amazing game play by linear i mean it's a rapid game imagine how quick you can calculate this uh, linear offers queen no g3 queen exchange and wesley doesn't accept wesley doesn't accept there is a good reason for it to not accept it but uh, I was amazed by this move actually. I mean, uh, your whole plan, and you know what is your plan. Your plan is to use um, bishop and queen battery to attack to h7. And oh, sorry. And it's a blitz game. Uh, sorry, it's a rapid game. You don't have all time in the world to think about it. To actually to think on think out of the box. Your box is to go queen bishop battery to h7 and then then you change your mind completely say that okay i don't want this queen that's amazing that's amazing i think i i, I found it very beautiful and very very strong uh, and he showed why he's cuban originally actually uh, currently he's american but he has something from capablanca in his blood so, a very deep understanding in a short period of time and thinking completely out of the box. And Wesley calculates correctly and returns the queen back. And what was happening if Wesley was going after this queen? This was uh, a nightmare for Wesley. Uh, first attacks the knight if you go back uh, if you go look at engine engine says that for example push this pawn i mean push this pawn let the knight be captured and this is better for you engine says that leave with the piece down it's better than saving the piece and why because if you save the piece takes the pawn okay it's a pawn take back takes the pawn so white is up a pawn Actually, up two pawns. No, sorry, up one pawn, but um, one pawn, D pawn of leg is very weak right now. And then you may defend the knight. Why you defend the knight? Because once this knight move on the once the let me show just to show the move. Once once this knight move, the other knight is attacked by bishop. So you should be um, aware and defend that knight. So you defend it, and then finally the knight moves, and it is attacked twice. The g6 knight attacked twice. Takes, and you don't take that knight, you take the next pawn, and attacking the pawn knight. So you are attacking two pieces, and black cannot save both of them. And black retreats, and you grab the piece, and that's it. And count the pieces, uh, count the pawns, uh, you're up two pawns uh, and much better pawn structure. And yeah, 
what can you say about this position is only black who is uh, struggling for play and this is even this could be you know, this immediately goes to losing actually because you cannot let the black rook to go to the back rank otherwise you will get a, you know, into big problems and if you exchange the rooks then you lose a knight basically i mean you cannot save the knight so and Wesley very well calculated all this line i mean this is crazy line you see it's a crazy line and you need to calculate deep uh, to see it and both of them calculated very well but the most difficult part was to spot that this move exists queen g3 exists and that was awesome by linear so let's go forward and linear keeps calm because he knows that his plan is easy uh, queen uh, bishop battery so moves the uh, queen away finally exchange the knight the, the, the wesley couldn't wait all the time do nothing and wait and get uh, destroyed slowly so try try something but it doesn't work at this position engine says that just grab this uh, palm but it doesn't help much because uh, the idea is the same and even here white can give up a, a rook for a knight and to set up its battery towards the king of the black but anyways firstly took the g pawn and I said linear said that i don't care about your knight I just go for mating attack. Wesley says then no wait. And Wesley also plays and plays some counterplay. Linear plays h1 y because because for example if you try for example to attack this queen and say that I will mate you in the next move, then it's the end of a day for white. You should be careful, these are top grandmasters. And they play very sneaky moves. This is a discovery check. Okay, grab the queen. Doesn't matter. And then there is an intermezzo here. Takes the rook first. And after you move the king, there is another intermezzo. Obviously, it's also very tricky. Yep. Rook g2. Uh, and then finally grabs the queen. Now count the pieces. It's awful for white. And white is completely losing. So, guys, if you are attacking and you have a mating attack, don't worry, don't uh, hurry. Okay? Keep calm and just uh, consolidate your position. And look at what Linear did. He didn't fall for the mating attack. And then finally he gives up a rook for a knight of course you cannot capture the knight because it's a mate on h7 you know the, the team and at this position after uh, linear takes the h5 pawn black resigns because it cannot do anything right it's a mate in one i mean if you move the king this is a mate if you take it this is a mate yeah, it was very amazing game, very educational game. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.